All right, good guys. So, really quickly, man, I'm bringing you guys some really, really good content, man. Uh, obviously, good guys. Like, before we get started, man, I want you guys to, if you guys want to, go ahead and like and subscribe. I make really good content. I post a lot, uh, usually daily. Uh, not usually, always daily. And um, I also post, uh, you know, double time as well. So, but really, it's not really about me right now. What it's about, good guys, is obviously Steve Jobs dropped one of the greatest speeches, I think, honestly, for entrepreneurs that has ever been dropped before, um, genuinely. And this man was extraordinary. One of my, I, I say one of my mentors, personally. I study a lot of his content, a lot of his speeches, his mannerisms, uh, a lot of the things that you don't have to deal with him as a, as a person when it comes down to his craft, his addiction. I call it, um, which is his love, which is his business. Uh, I really want to bring this content to you, good guys, because I always tell you I don't make content for you guys to, you know, just, just to like listen to what I'm saying. I make content for you guys to absorb what I'm saying, so that you guys have the ability to, you know, dominate in your business, in your personal life, in your sports, in your career, whatever you're trying to dominate in. And so for me right now, good guys, I really want to bring you this content of Steve Jobs. Uh, he's about to do one of the greatest speeches we've ever you know, seen or heard. I'm going to play it for you at the end of it, guys. I'm going to come back. We're going to talk about it a little bit. So I hope you stay to the end of the video to kind of hear my words. But let's hop straight to it, good guys. Enough talking. Today, I want to tell you three stories from my life. That's it. No big deal. Just three stories. The first story is about connecting the dots. I dropped out of Reed College after the first six months, but then stayed around as a drop-in for another 18 months or so before I really quit. So why'd I drop out? It started before I was born. My biological mother was a young, unwed graduate student and she decided to put me up for adoption. She felt very strongly that I should be adopted by college graduates, so everything was all set for me to be adopted at birth by a lawyer and his wife. Except that when I popped out, they decided at the last minute that they really wanted a girl. So my parents, who were on a waiting list, got a call in the middle of the night asking, we've got an unexpected baby boy, do you want him? They said, of course. My biological mother found out later that my mother had never graduated from college and that my father had never graduated from high school. She refused to sign the final adoption papers. She only relented a few months later when my parents promised that I would go to college. This was the start in my life. And 17 years later, I did go to college. But I naively chose a college that was almost as expensive as Stanford. And all of my working class parents' savings were being spent on my college tuition. After six months, I couldn't see the value in it. I had no idea what I wanted to do with my life and no idea how college was going to help me figure it out. And here I was spending all the money my parents had saved their entire life. So I decided to drop out and trust that it would all work out okay. It was pretty scary at the time, but looking back, it was one of the best decisions I ever made. The minute I dropped out, I could stop taking the required classes that didn't interest me and begin dropping in on the ones that looked far more interesting. It wasn't all romantic. I didn't have a dorm room, so I slept on the floor in friends' rooms. I returned Coke bottles for the five cent deposits to buy food with and I would walk the seven miles across town every Sunday night to get one good meal a week at the Hare Krishna temple. I loved it. And much of what I stumbled into by following my curiosity and intuition turned out to be priceless later on. Let me give you one example. Reed College at that time offered perhaps the best calligraphy instruction in the country. Throughout the campus, every poster, every label on every drawer was beautifully hand calligraphed. Because I had dropped out and didn't have to take the normal classes, I decided to take a calligraphy class to learn how to do this. I learned about serif and sans serif typefaces, about varying the amount of space between different letter combinations, 
about what makes great typography great. It was beautiful, historical, artistically subtle in a way that science can't capture, and I found it fascinating. None of this had even a hope of any practical application in my life. But 10 years later, when we were designing the first Macintosh computer, it all came back to me. And we designed it all into the Mac. It was the first computer with beautiful typography. If I had never dropped in on that single course in college, the Mac would have never had multiple typefaces or proportionally spaced fonts. And since Windows just copied the Mac, it's likely that no personal computer would have them. If I had never dropped out, I would have never dropped in on that calligraphy class, and personal computers might not have the wonderful typography that they do. Of course, it was impossible to connect the dots looking forward when I was in college, but it was very, very clear looking backwards 10 years later. Again, you can't connect the dots looking forward. You can only connect them looking backwards. So you have to trust that the dots will somehow connect in your future. You have to trust in something, your gut, destiny, life, karma, whatever, because believing that the dots will connect down the road will give you the confidence to follow your heart even when it leads you off the well-worn path, and that will make all the difference. My second story is about love and loss. I was lucky. I found what I loved to do early in life. Waz and I started Apple in my parents' garage when I was 20. We worked hard, and in 10 years, Apple had grown from just the two of us in a garage into a $2 billion company with over 4,000 employees. We just released our finest creation, the Macintosh, a year earlier, and I just turned 30. And then I got fired. How can you get fired from a company you started? Well, as Apple grew, we hired someone who I thought was very talented to run the company with me. And for the first year or so, things went well. But then our visions of the future began to diverge, and eventually we had a falling out. When we did, our board of directors sided with him. And so at 30, I was out, and very publicly out. What had been the focus of my entire adult life was gone, and it was devastating. I really didn't know what to do for a few months. I felt that I had let the previous generation of entrepreneurs down, that I had dropped the baton as it was being passed to me. I met with David Packard and Bob Noyce and tried to apologize for screwing up so badly. I was a very public failure and I even thought about running away from the valley. But something slowly began to dawn on me. I still loved what I did. The turn of events at Apple had not changed that one bit. I'd been rejected, but I was still in love. And so I decided to start over. I didn't see it then, but it turned out that getting fired from Apple was the best thing that could have ever happened to me. The heaviness of being successful was replaced by the lightness of being a beginner again, less sure about everything. It freed me to enter one of the most creative periods of my life. During the next five years, I started a company named Next, another company named Pixar, and fell in love with an amazing woman who would become my wife. Pixar went on to create the world's first computer animated feature film, Toy Story, and is now the most successful animation studio in the world. In a remarkable turn of events, Apple bought Next, and I returned to Apple, and the technology we developed at Next is at the heart of Apple's current renaissance. And Lorene and I have a wonderful family together. I'm pretty sure none of this would have happened if I hadn't been fired from Apple. It was awful tasting medicine, but I guess the patient needed it. Sometime life, sometimes life's going to hit you in the head with a brick. Don't lose faith. I'm convinced that the only thing that kept me going was that I loved what I did. You've got to find what you love. And that is as true for work as it is for your lovers. Your work is going to fill a large part of your life. And the only way to be truly satisfied is to do what you believe is great work. And the only way to do great work is to love what you do. If you haven't found it yet, keep looking and don't settle. As with all matters of the heart, you'll know when you find it. And like any great relationship, it just gets better and better as the years roll on. So keep looking, don't settle. My third story is about death. When I was 17, I read a quote that went something like, 
If you live each day as if it was your last, someday you'll most certainly be right. It made an impression on me, and since then, for the past 33 years, I have looked in the mirror every morning and asked myself, if today were the last day of my life, would I want to do what I am about to do today? And whenever the answer has been no for too many days in a row, I know I need to change something. Remembering that I'll be dead soon is the most important tool I've ever encountered to help me make the big choices in life. Because almost everything, all external expectations, all pride, all fear of embarrassment or failure, these things just fall away in the face of death, leaving only what is truly important. Remembering that you are going to die is the best way I know to avoid the trap of thinking you have something to lose. You are already naked. There is no reason not to follow your heart. No one wants to die. Hey you guys. So I want to first say from a personal thing, like I, I want to first say like thank you to Steve Jobs guys because if it wasn't for Steve Jobs guys, I promise you man, my journey would be 10 times harder right now. I watched this years ago um, when it actually was closer to when it came out, this speech. And it was right when I had started my business journey and I walked away from basketball, good guys. And it was one of the toughest things I ever had to do in my life, good guys, which was walk away from something that I loved. Uh, but I knew in my heart of hearts, like I didn't love it as much as I loved the business. And I fell in love with business when I was a kid, when I made my first business as a kid and I was selling candy. That was the first ever business I ever made. And my grandfather, rest in peace, the goat with business right here, uh, Mr. Otis, um, he really showed me how business was supposed to be ran. He really mentored me and took me in all of his businesses and had me work in there at a young age, good guys. And so when I fell in love with business and I was just really good at it, I was better. It was natural to me selling things in person to a customer. Um, it, it really put me in a, a thought process like, damn, like this is what like I always tell you, good guys. And I'm going to hop into a lot of what he's saying. We're going to dive deep into this. But I always tell you guys like a lot of you guys, good guys are doing shit that like you're not great at. And it's okay because sometimes you learn skills and things that you aren't great at. Like, for instance, like I wasn't great at basketball. I had to really work my ass off to become great at basketball, to become an offensive and defensive player. I was always great at defense, but I, I, I had to really work my ass off and bust my ass and sacrifice to become a two-way player, to become at least capable of putting a bucket on someone's head on all levels on the court, mid-range, three-pointer, deep three, off the dribble, catch and shoot, in the mid-range, off the dribble, come off the screen, ball screen, iso, hit him with a left, right, bomb, rip through, put it between the legs, uh, you know what I'm saying, rip through, you feel what I'm saying, like, hezzy, uh, you know, break them off, you see what I'm saying, so for me, good guys, like, I really had to work to get to that point. And so, but basketball and I appreciate it. It taught me so much. And, and that's what he's saying. Like, because I don't play basketball anymore and I don't have the love to play basketball and be an athlete in it and be dominant in any fashion or form as a player does not mean that any all the things that I learned just go to waste. And so to kind of circle all this back around, good guys, is like, I always tell you like, Find out what you're great at, what you're naturally just better than motherfuckers. You're naturally good guy, better than a lot of people at some shit. It may be, you may be an amazing speaker. You may just be able to just have a natural ability to speak to people. Or you may just be an extremely great reader. You may be able to just read books just better than everybody, bro. Find out how to get inside of that arena and then figure out at an entry level. It doesn't You don't have to go to college, bro. I implore you guys to know what you want to do before you go to college. Don't just go to college just to go to college. You see what I'm saying? That's what he understood just as I understood. Like I was in college at one point and for business administration. And I was just like, bro, like I've already taken all the classes for the major. Like at this point, like I don't want to take these other classes. Like this doesn't this is it doesn't resonate with me. I would rather be working in a business, learning what I want to know. Like I want to learn from these businesses. 
So I implore you guys to work with your strengths. You, you, everyone has a strength. Everyone has a strength. Everyone has a strength. It's a book called Strengths and Weaknesses um, and Strength Finders, I believe. And the book really explains to you how to find your strengths and then maximize those strengths and then walk away from your weaknesses, but really focus on your strengths. So in that regard, that's what I'm really saying. And so for him, he found his strengths early on. He found his passion. And for me, good guys, I know it may seem crazy, but customer service is my passion. I am a cleaner in person and customer service. It doesn't matter what happens in a day i'm still going to put that work in i'm still going to come in and dominate i'm still going to give 110 percent with the worst news of my life on the line i'm still going to come in and do what i do it took time for me to do that good guys it took seven years of going through a lot of bullshit for me to be able to get to the point of becoming a cleaner it takes time a lot of y'all are not patient I was blessed to have a mentor that is Italian that taught me patience, taught me the art of patience, taught me how to wait my turn. Everybody has to wait their turn. Steve Jobs had to wait his turn. Elon Musk had to wait his turn. JP Morgan had to wait his turn. Uh, Howard Hughes had to wait his turn. Every entrepreneur that did it the old school way, the grind, the starting it out from the beginning and working it up to when it was popping when it was at the portion where you know it was dominant and no one could fuck with it these individuals had to wait their turn and it takes time to really build the skills and if you want to do it the right way and you want to win at the top level and you don't want your business how steve had to learn through losing his business had to learn through the hardships of being not the best entrepreneur being not the best ceo being not the best leader in the business when he first started and then the business being taken from him from sharks that were in it that were just better than him at that time he had to learn from those mistakes you don't want to learn from your mistakes inside your business you want to make these mistakes in other people's businesses guys i've been fired from two businesses guys just two i've been fired from just two businesses bro and it's not that i'm i don't do my job it's not that i'll come into work ready to work it's not that i'll come into work dominating it's the fact that i'm just not a good employee and when i tell you i'm not a good employee like i can follow the rules i can follow leadership but it's certain aspects where i understand that certain things just shouldn't work that way and sometimes it's hard for me to really, when I see things are unjust or I see things are just not the way they should be, I, I sometimes just do my own thing. And that's just not how business should work as an employee. And so these are things that I have to learn. Like you have to learn how to follow to be able to learn how to lead. And so when I bring this content to you guys, I really want you guys to understand that, man, like, you know, I'm going to talk to you guys one day about my journey and, and, and necessary sacrifices because my journey is similar to his, bro. Like, you know, you guys just haven't seen the real business in which I want to create yet because right now I'm doing everything, learning from these entrepreneurs on what not to do. And for me, man, like right now I'm working on a small business that I'm working on, which I'm really, really excited about. And uh, it's up and running right now. But one of the biggest things I'm trying my absolute hardest to be a full time entrepreneur while still working two jobs and on top of that filming videos for you guys and doing so many other things around that as well it's difficult but with all difficulties comes growth with struggle sacrifice with suffering comes growth and with these pains you're able to see something beautiful be made and that's what he said man like i remember when i was in tallahassee man i, I did the same exact thing he did i um ended up dropping out of college you know what I'm saying? Like with pretty much a year left of credits to be able to transfer wherever I wanted to. And I ended up just stopping. I was like, you know what? This, this is just not what I want to do anymore. And I ended up dropping in on classes at Florida State University. I would go to campus and I would go to the library and the business library and I would just read books like all day. Like literally, bro, just like go to the library and just read. And I you know, stumbled across one of the greatest books I've ever read, which was Donald Trump's Never Give Up one of the best books I've ever read in my life. And it set me on a course to where I'm at now. But imagine if I never dropped out and I never went to a better college than what I was going to, to go read those books and go read foundational structures of management and go read the books that, you know, and write down all of these different, you know, things to be able to put inside of my business. Like, imagine guys so you don't know when you're going to use things you don't know and i've been worked in so many different industries like old money industries to be able to have an even greater understanding of how business operates at just the 
the, 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 the lowest level and the highest level. I worked for corporations. I worked for small businesses. I worked for medium sized businesses. I've worked for, you know, just terribly ran businesses that don't have any structure and are ruthless. I've worked for businesses that are just nitpickers and just, you know, aggravating as fuck and just, you know, run you up the wall as an employee. I've worked for businesses that are amazing, great businesses, care about the employees, do a lot for the employees, you know, have great management systems, family oriented. I've worked for a small business that owned a monopoly that, you know, was just ran in such an amazing way and um, delivered such great services and, you know, was able to show me what a real business is supposed to look like. So I've learned from so many different mentors. I've learned from so many different businesses on how to be able to run a business and I'm accumulating this knowledge and it's hitting, it's bubbling now. It's bubbling now, good guys. It's fucking bubbling now, man. And so for me, good guys, I look inside and I say to myself, like, everything is going to work out. I don't doubt my success. I don't doubt the knowledge is the knowledge and the things in which I've learned. I understand that when my time comes for my patience, my sacrifice and my suffering and the things in which I've sacrificed to get to where I need to go, my day will be unparalleled to anyone in this motherfucking world. And so I give you guys the sauce, I give you guys the game because I don't fear you, brother. I want you to be better than me. That's why I give you this sauce. That's why I give you my sauce. That's why I give you the things from other people as well. I don't hold anything back because it's like I want to compete. And to be able to compete, I want you to take everything you can from me because I want you to be better than me. If you are better than me, that means I have someone to try to be better than, which means I'm competing with the best. You see what I'm saying? So for me, good guys, I just really wanted to bring you this content today. Um, get on your journey, bro. It's a long journey. He said it took 10 years from him to become the greatest business in the world. From the age of 20, 10 years later, that's 31. Y'all are expecting y'all to be the greatest people since sliced bread within days, bro. This is what the internet has done to y'all. Pain and sacrifice, brother. Just stay on your purpose, man. Keep your head down and just really grind. If you continue to do that and you don't complain about it, you fall in love with it. I love what I do. It doesn't matter what today look like, tomorrow look like. I'm still going to love what I do. And when I, I realized when I fell in love with customer service, servicing customers was when I went through the most pain. It started when I did valet, when I was outside in the rain, in the fucking snow. I was outside in the rain, the hot sun, and I'm having to service people, giving them the best service that they ever experienced in their motherfucking life, bruh. I fell in love, bro. And then I ended up having to go to work that same night. I worked two jobs, one outside, one inside. I had to take a shower and then go inside of my office in an operations office, man. And I had to go in there and dominate again. Then dominate again, bruh. And I had to go in there and deal with more customers, escalation calls. I had to deal with escalation emails. I had to deal with multiple different in, in operations, order processing, POS, purchase of sale. I had to deal with all of it, baby. I had to do with fulfillment, packaging, and labeling, and doing this. And I'm, I'm suffering, shin splints, and I'm sitting there servicing niggas. They don't know what's going on. They just know I need to get the best service, so I got to give it to them. I got to give it to them, baby. And that's what it got to be, baby. That's what it is. It just got to be that way, you know? It's just what it is. And so what I'm saying to you good guys is that when you love what you do, it's an addiction. You have to become addicted. He is addicted. He is fucked up. I'm not telling you to be a fucked up human being in the aspect of just like not giving a fuck about people. I'm saying you got to be fucked up. You got to just love it. You got to just it it, it it has to be like a it, it has to be like a, 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 a it just has to be you and her. You know, it's just that's what it is. It's what it got to be good guys. It just has to be you and her and just when it's you and her, it's just like, it's just, it's, it, it, it's a feeling inside and it's just, I can't explain it. It's just something that you just have to go through, good guy. And you just got to like, it took me time to get here. It just wasn't overnight. Like I had to go through many struggles. I had to get kicked out of businesses. I had to get, you know, labeled as just, you know, not a good employee. When I loved what I did, I loved the businesses. I, I loved what and how I operate, man. And just, I had to get misunderstood, good guys. I had to go through the pain, the struggle, good guys. The struggle and the pain is what I had to go through. And this is why, again, good guys, I remember it all. When my day comes, Sorry, good guys. It's like pollen season, bro. I got my flow nays and shit, bro. It's really bad out here. Hold up.
yeah man my, my shit's really bad but yeah man so yeah bro you just gotta just like just fall in love with it man and when you fall in love with it guys your life is gonna change your life is gonna change your family has to understand what it is i try to explain to my mom you know i love her so much but I just love this more than I love humans at this point because I understand what my business is going to do for so many humans. It's going to be able to employ people. I'm going to be able to help people. I'm going to be able to do what a lot of these trash bag businesses I worked for did not do for me. And I'm going to be able to teach people, lead people, help people. I'm going to be able to employ people and help them pay for their bills. I'm going to help people you know, with their mental, having psychologists inside of my businesses so that they'll be able to, you feel what I'm saying, go and talk to a therapist. Because you understand, bro, how many people go to work, bro, and have real life situations, real life struggles, good guys. This is why my purpose of being an entrepreneur, this is, this is the reason for why I want to be an entrepreneur is to be able to help people and lead them when they come in my business and give me fucking 40 hours out of the week to come in my business, bro. I'm going to give them life, bro. I'm going to give them love. I'm going to give them help. I'm going to give them structure. It doesn't matter if this is in my trucking business, my label. It doesn't matter if this is in my small businesses. It doesn't matter if this is in my corporate business. It doesn't matter where the fuck we at. They gonna get love, and what they are gonna get from me is the ability to better themselves. So when they leave my business, if they wanna go to a different business, if they wanna start their own business, guess what? They are gonna remember me, and they got, guess what? These blessings will come back to me tenfold. They gonna wanna work with me in some aspect, and if they don't, it's cool, we could be competitors, it's just better for the business, but guess what? I helped you become better, and you will remember that. And sometimes loyalty, good guys, doing something with no, with no thought process of what am I gonna get back from it? It's how you get sometimes even greater karma, good guys. So this is my reasoning behind why I want to be an entrepreneur, why I want to own businesses, why I want to get the fuck from out of these businesses and step into my own business full time, bro, to be able to help people, bro, to be able to employ people and lead them, dog, and teach them how to be better versions of themselves within my business, challenge them, motivate them, help them become better. You see what I'm saying? Make a community of people that I take care of, bro. That's why I want to be an entrepreneur. You got to figure out your why, man. You got to figure out your why, brother. Figure out your why, man. And I promise you, everything else in your life is going to be easy. Everything else in your life is going to be easy. I've went through a lot. Like I said, there were many down times, suffering times, brother. You see what I'm saying? Like him, homelessness, bro. I had to go through that too. It was a lot of shit, bro, on this journey, bro. And it takes so much out of you, bro. And if I didn't have my reason of why... That God put me on this earth. If you don't believe in God, bro, the, the, the earth, the, the universe, the, the spiritual at plane put me on this earth to be able to do this. I was born for this. You got to figure out what you're born for, bro. You got to figure out what is important and why it is important to you. Because once you figure out that why, no matter what you go through, you're going to always remember this is just a part of the journey. This is just a part of the journey, and this is the hardest portion of the journey. The good days are here for me now, good guys. I went through all the dark times. I went through all the hard times. I just went through a lot of dark times, a lot of hard times, dealing with some fuck shit at these businesses, bro. Foot on the pedal, good guys. Going all the way to the max, bro. Maxing that bitch out because I'm trying to get great now, not later. Fuck later. I'm trying to get great now. Why the fuck am I not pushing on the gas all the way? Why are you not pushing on the gas all the way? Your foot should be all the way on the floor, bro. Your your engine should be, it should be doing that type of shit, bro. Your RPM should be maxed the fuck out. You should not be sitting around this bitch chilling, bro. It's no reason to. You can die tomorrow. At least I died and I said, hey, bro, at least I got to see what this felt like. At least I can say that, bro. You know, it's just, just what it is. When them dividends coming, I'm going to be like, hey, bro, like, at least I maxed out. You feel me? It's just what it is, bro. It's what it got to be. You know, it's just what it is. So, good guys, I love you, man. I really appreciate you guys for watching the video. Thank you again, guys. And uh, I want you guys to have a blessed day. And uh, go hard, bro. Go hard. And if you're going, if you're in the downtime and you're in the beginning stages, bro, just just be patient. Patience, brother. It took seven years for me to get to this point, and I'm not even at my prime yet. I haven't stepped into it fully yet. I'm here, but y'all haven't seen the dividends yet. Y'all gonna see it. Just stay. Just subscribe. Like. But when you see it, you're going to be like, damn, it took seven years, bro. It's not overnight. It takes a minute. I'm telling you, fall in love with the journey. Don't fall in love with the end product. Get out of that thought process, bro. Fuck with y'all, man. Y'all know what time it is, man. We out.